Looking at the Hoka sign, it's definitely asymmetrical. The question then becomes, is it balanced? And if so, what has Hokusai done to create that sense of balance? What element of the composition has the most visual weight? For most of us, it's the Great Wave. They named it after it and everything. It is a huge force of nature, and it's complex and large and bold and definitely stands out. It's pretty much the only thing in the upper half of the composition. But what part of the wave has the most visual weight? For me, it's the leading edge, the part that's about to crest and come crashing down into the ocean. The fact that this would look completely different in another second gives it a sense of tension, though almost all of the wave is on the left-hand side of the composition. The part of the wave I focus on is actually just to the right. The sense of motion is also pulling me in that direction. There's a strong curvilinear element where I can imagine the cresting of the wave as it's about to enter this space that is also a big, large shape. In fact, we have two intersecting curvilinear forms, one of which is dark, one of which is lighter. It's almost a yin-yang, a symbol for something. Remember how we said that things gain visual weight as they approach the edge? That makes this rise very important to the composition, not only because it creates the yang, but also because it gives some visual weight on this extreme edge. We're then also able to notice the tiny details of all the small figures on the boats. But perhaps most importantly is this element right here. So we're balancing out this huge wave with a small interruption into the negative space here. And that small interruption is actually really important. That is Mount Fuji. It is a symbol for Japan. Think of it sort of like the Japanese version of the Statue of Liberty. It's something that's going to carry a lot of significance and cultural and therefore visual weight for the intended audience. Also, I'm kind of cheating on the title because this print is actually part of a portfolio of views of Mount Fuji. So if you're looking at the whole series together, you're actively searching for Mount Fuji, giving it even greater visual weight. Finally, we want to acknowledge something, which is that we're literally looking at this wrong. I've said that some of us read images the same way we read text, which for us means that we are starting in the upper left and moving down and to the right. But the original audience would come in this direction from the right and hit the wave before circling back. It's possible that this part would have actually less visual weight than the center area. Symmetrical balance is the same on both sides. Asymmetrical balance isn't the same on both sides, but the artist is compensated for the distribution of visual weight. Another type of balance is what we're seeing here, which is what's known as an all-over pattern. An all-over pattern will repeat visual motifs that might themselves not be fully balanced, but because they're repeated sufficiently, they sort of cancel each other out. Similarly, something called crystallographic balance relies on an all-over composition. There isn't any one element that sticks out and disrupts the balance. We don't exactly have the same distribution of visual weight everywhere, but there isn't a clear focal point that pulls me away from the rest of the composition. This is slightly different than an all-over pattern, which requires repetition 